today we're looking at the line from the carol, Join the Triumph of the Skies. This points to the time when the shepherds were completely overwhelmed by the sight of the angelic choir in the night sky, singing glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whose face favour rests. This must have been a sight to behold. But what was the triumph the angels were singing about? Surely it was a birth of the Messiah, the one who would come and fulfil all the requirements to reconcile God to man and man to God. But I wonder, do you ever look up into the sky? Do you ever look up at night and wonder? Ever since the time of creation, mankind has always looked up to the sky above. Abraham was told by God to look up and count the stars in the heavens. Now the word heaven or heavens that the Bible uses doesn't just describe a location or a place that we go to when we die. It describes simply the expanse above our heads. In the Christmas story, the Magi spent their lives looking at the heavens and trying to decipher knowledge from what they saw. And their interpretation was that this was a significant time. And together with the star of Bethlehem, set off to travel hundreds of miles to offer small gifts to a child. And even Jesus, after his resurrection, when he left the disciples, he ascended up through the clouds and left them gazing upwards. Acts records it like this. Jesus was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking up into the sky? This Jesus, whom has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you've seen him go. You know, before we had all this modern technology that helps us forecast our weather, it was often the case of looking up into the sky at the clouds and trying to work out what was about to happen. I'm sure you know red sky at night or red sky in the morning, either the shepherds or the fishermen's warning. And even Jesus referred to this looking up into the sky when admonishing the religious leaders of his day, saying they could interpret the sky above, but not the signs of the times they were living in. Our ancestors have looked up in the night sky and believed that each of those lights were actual spiritual entities, even angels or angelic beings looking down on earth. In the 21st century, we've taken this to a whole new level of looking into the sky. There's a telescope called the James Webb Telescope, which is situated some 1.2 million kilometres out in space, away from the Earth. Here, it's free from all the interference that the atmosphere gives to Earth-based telescopes, and has been taking some incredible pictures. And these pictures actually show that the night sky is teeming with activity. There are galaxies and astronomical bodies. The sky is actually very, very full of life. And this exploration of the heavens, which NASA says, these pictures show that there are probably hundreds, thousands, even millions of galaxies. Surely it raises the question, are we alone? Is there nobody else? 
And also, it makes us realise how very small and insignificant we are. Psalm 8 records, When I consider the works of your fingers, the heavens above, the moon, the stars which you set in place, what is man that you're mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? The shepherds were seen as outcasts and undesirables, but God chose to draw back the veil of the heavens so they could see into what was taking place in heaven at the time of Christmas. They were honoured and privileged. And this is a pattern throughout the Bible of God choosing the unlikely, the overlooked, and showing them things which are hidden from the so-called wise and knowing. Today, the line from the song is really an invitation for us to close our natural eyes and open our spiritual eyes to see what is really taking place in the unseen realm. A scene that is playing out 24-7, 365 days a year. Revelation 4.8 says, Day and night they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, who was and is and is to come. A prayer. Father, open the eyes of our hearts to understand and see that you are a God who is worthy of adoration and praise, now and forevermore. Amen.